geology in a jiffy. What's in the bag? It's... Caves. What is a cave? Caves are natural holes in the ground, big enough for a human to explore them. One could classify caves in two ways, relict and active. Relict caves do not have water flowing in them, although water may be stored in them. Active caves do have water flowing in them, with inflow caves having streams sink into them, outflow caves having streams emerge from them, and through caves have streams traverse the cave. How big are caves? Mammoth Cave in America, discovered in 1791, is the longest known cave at nearly 668 kilometres long. Very often a cave in Georgia is much shorter but extends downwards to over two kilometres below its highest entrance. Wow! Caves also vary in their shape, this being controlled by a number of geological factors, factors which help us understand the details of the cave's history worked out by studying the shape of the cave's passages. Low flat passages are formed on horizontal cracks or bedding planes between the layers of rock. Tall narrow passages form on vertical cracks or joints in the rock. Keyhole or T-shaped passages form when a tall narrow passage develops below a low flat passage. Circular passages or phreatic passages form when water completely fills the passage like a pipe so the water is able to dissolve the rock equally on all sides. How do caves form? Please do watch our Geology in a Jiffy film to see how caves precurse the formation of stacks. If we think about types of caves, we know there are nine types of cave, four main ones, plus other less common types of cave. Solutional or cast caves are very common in areas where soluble rocks, such as limestone, marble, dolomite, salt or gypsum are found. The caves are formed by the acidic rainwater seeping down through bedding planes and joints or faults, the rainwater corroding into and so widening these cracks over time, forming caves and tunnels which can join up to make some spectacular caverns and cave systems. The corroding of the rocks leads to the formation of the typical cast landforms, with its surface sinkholes leading down to the underground cave drainage systems, these full of features such as stalactites and stalagmites. These explained in our Geology in a Jiffy videos. Solutional caves, such as this one in the Carlsbad Cavern in America, are also formed by acidic gases, such as hydrogen sulphide, when they mix with rainwater to form sulfuric acid, which then corrodes the rocks. But these caves formed from below, due to the underlying oil reservoir releasing the gases, so meaning the caves formed from below, rather than above, as the acidic water percolating from the surface does. Primary caves form at the same time as the surrounding rocks are formed. The most common primary caves are lava caves or lava tubes or tunnels, forming during volcanic activity. As lava flows downhill, its surface and walls cools and solidifies, but the hot liquid lava underneath the crust continues to flow under that crust and, as the lava drains out, a hollow tube remains. This photo clearly shows a lava tube under its overlying crust, the tube now half empty of flowing lava. Sea caves, or littoral caves, are found where the sea meets the land in coastlines. These caves are formed by the action of waves pounding against the sea cliffs that line the shores of oceans and larger lakes, evidence of the enormous power of waves, being further enlarged and modified by wave-carried sand and gravel, all akin to a geological hammer attacking the rock. Great examples of sea caves forming can be seen at Burling Gap in southern England, where the 50 metre high cliff faces are bordered by pebble beaches the beach is adjacent to the cliff face of a soft white limestone known as chalk. The bedding is very clear to see and, if you look in this infant cave, one can see a fault at the rear of the cave. This cave is being formed by the sea attacking this plane of weakness in the cliff, forming a small cave as it does so. Over time, continued erosion has enlarged the cave, making the cave deeper and wider, until we get to the present day, this process undoubtedly going to continue into the future too, eroding back the cliff face from the sea. Corrosional or erosional caves form entirely by erosion by water flowing in streams, in which the load, trees and pebbles for example, combined with the water that carries them, all acting like hammers, erode the riverbank, which, over time, causes the stream or river to widen, and also caves to form at the sides of the streams and rivers, the flowing water attacking zones of weaknesses such as faults or joints. 
these guiding the direction of erosion by the stream, forming more caves. Glacier caves form within the ice of a glacier, often carved out by water running through or under the glacier's ice. This is a glacier cave in the Solheimer Jokult Glacier in Iceland, in which we can clearly see how the water has flowed through underneath the ice, across the underlying rock and sediment, the ice having been sculpted by the flowing meltwater. Fracture caves form when a soluble layer of rock dissolves when groundwater flows through it. This, and possibly some of the overlying ceiling layer, collapse, forming a fracture cave. Over time, these caves can enlarge by the overlying ceiling layers of rock continuing to collapse into the underlying cave. Aeolian caves are also erosional caves, formed, as their name suggests, by erosion by the wind in deserts. Imagine this sandstorm rolling towards you. If we could study the sand grains in the cloud, we would see billions of tiny grains of different minerals and shapes and sizes, but all being blown along, each grain acting like a geological hammer, which, when they hit a rock face, they hammer away at the surface, causing the cliff to not only retreat, but also become smoother and more rounded as it is sandblasted forming surprisingly large and impressive caves and structures, as per how this arch is formed in Utah, America. Talus caves are the openings formed between large boulders that have fallen from above, down into a random heap. Most talus caves are very small, both in length and in cross-section, although there are sometimes interconnected passages, although these caves should be avoided, as they are usually unstable and quite dangerous. Ankyelian caves are usually coastal, and contain a mixture of fresh water and saline water, usually seawater. The nine types of cave. Please subscribe to my channel. Bye!